CataractCoach.com. Bilateral IOL exchange. This patient no longer wanted those multifocal IOLs. So, wow, bilateral. Now, probably not same day bilateral, but here's the patient with the trifocal or multifocal lens in the capsule bag. Here, making an incision, entering the eye here. Nice fill with viscoelastic. And the key here is to really take your time in separating this lens out. Now, we sped up all the videos. Don't worry about that. We just want to get through them. But that little bit of visco dissection is important to open up the capsule bag. You want to separate the anterior and posterior leaflets of the capsule so you can get this lens accessed and brought it, bring it up. Now, going around it, if you get any adhesions there, the bulbous tip of that optic or haptic there can stick to the capsule and get encased in there. And so don't force it. You have to do further visco dissection or even a little manual dissection. Here's where an extra pair of these can help you. So try to get it dialed up and try to get it out. There it is. Now the rest should be relatively easy. Now you've got the lens freed up. Get it in the anterior chamber. Look at that slick technique to bring one haptic out. Ooh, I bet we're going to do my favorite, twist it out. Let's see. So there it is, grabbing with the forceps. And now there's the second instrument going across it. You just forget this, we'll twist you, just yank it out. Hey, it works great, no problem. And now the new lens goes in. So it's interesting that this patient did not want the benefits of multifocality. Now, obviously, we've got to explain to our patients that, yeah, there's always a trade off. If you get a multifocal lens, trifocal lens, et cetera, you're going to give up some degree of image quality in order to achieve that convenience of a wider range and not needing glasses. And so explaining that ahead of time is probably very important. Now here at the end, getting in a monofocal lens going in the capsule bag. Now the monofocal lens will give a much better image quality, but you gotta tell the patient, you're gonna lose that range, right? Hey, did I tell you about cataractcoach.com, our teaching website? I know, you gotta go to the website, sign up for that free daily email. Check out the full amount of resources there. So many great things you can download, like the free book and the curriculum series. And definitely check out that podcast. Oh my God, the Counter Coach podcast is so good. Now, here you go, end of the case. Look at that, nicely done. Now, be careful though. Patients are going to complain and so much that can make you do a bilateral I will exchange may also be the same patient who's going to complain about being even slightly off of a target. You aim for amitropia and the patient ends up minus a half. Don't be surprised the patient's upset. I literally fielded an email from a patient recently who was off by a half diopter and for a free hop measurement of 10 diopters of ametropia. And that's what you got to deal with. So here, again, this lens is dissecting pretty easily. I'm guessing this patient's not too far in the post-op period now. If the patient was a year post-op, it'd be a lot harder to dissect out this lens. And again, the key there is that trailing haptic, there you've been pulling on it. Yeah, that bulbous tip is where it gets stuck. In this case, there really wasn't a whole lot of fibrosis. So that's really good. These come out pretty easily here. Now, the question, too, is, is the patient going to complain in the post op period? Yes, image quality will be better. The patient will say, yes, then you aim for planar with these monofocals that are going in next, right? You'll say, the image quality is so much better. I'm happy to thank you, but, oh, look, the haptic broke off. Hey, that's an interesting one. So you got to do the twisting out. You just can't do yanking out. You got to do twisting out. I was saying the patient's going to be happy that, okay, you have great image quality for nighttime driving, but the patient will complain that I can't see my cell phone. So some nice patients, you got to be careful. They just don't understand this really that well. So now the lens has been rotated around, a little more viscoelastic, and now the other half has been brought outside the eye. And so to avoid tearing this, I would really try the twisting out technique. Just twisting it will compact it down. It'll come out the incision a lot easier. You don't have to, you don't have to just yank, but okay, hey, the yanking out works too. Yanking out works too. So again, it's hard to really make all patients happy, and we've got plenty of patients in my clinic too where... Such minor things. Patients are such perfectionists in their pursuit of, of better vision that sometimes they're unrealistic. Like you and I would be very happy if we were shooting for, we wanted amitropia and we ended up just a pinch of minus, a minus a half, minus a quarter, we'd love it, right? But some patients, boy, the amount of complaining. So a patient like this, you got to make sure you're going to set reasonable expectations for this IOL exchange. Because remember, every time you go back in the, inside the eye, tissues are weaker. You're causing a little more endothelial cell loss of the cornea. No question about it. Yes, the patient can do fine. But there's also a higher risk. What if the capsule breaks? What if the haptic gets stuck? In fact, we got a video coming up where the haptics are stuck for an IOL exchange. And we have to amputate the haptics. And we'll get into that. It's coming up in a couple of weeks. But beautiful case here. Patient obviously got nice monofocal lenses and a nice emetropic OU outcome, and hopefully is very happy.
And remember, check out that podcast every week, a brand new episode, an hour long, talking to a surgeon and learning so much together.